In this video, we are going to be exploring five DevTool features that just make debugging your CSS so much easier. Hi there, if you're new to this channel, my name is Kevin and here we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks and tutorials. And one thing that happens all the time in my tutorials, I have to bring up my dev tools, I have a problem, something's going on, I want to explain something. And in there, I'm using a bunch of features that just I've always known about and taken for granted a little bit. And people always ask me, how did you do that? Where's that feature? What extensions do I need? All of these are native features that are built into both Chrome and Firefox. I can't speak for many other browsers because those are the two that I use the most when using my dev tools. So we're gonna be looking at those five features. Plus I'm gonna mention a few extra things near the end as well that can also be helping you out. And you know, these are the types of tools that I wish existed back when I started. That was in the late nineties, nothing was around. And then eventually somebody made an extension for Firefox called Firebug that just exploded. Eventually it got integrated into Firefox and the rest is history. That made our lives so much easier. So let's go and look at what some of these features are. Um, before we get into it, you know, the whole thing is just how do we even access our dev tools, right? We need to get in there. Uh, so you can right click and you can do an inspect element. If you're in Chrome, it's going to say inspect, or you can do a few different shortcuts. Everybody always tells me about F12. So you can of course hit F12, open and closes it. There's also shift command I, which will open and close it and shift command C, which will open and close it. So a few different ways uh, that you can open them. All those shortcuts also work in Chrome as well. So that's how we can open it. Now, if you're a Safari diehard user and you wanna be using Safari, you can access the dev tools. They do have them. From the experience I do have with it, I'm not as big of a fan of it, but they are there, but you'll have to go into your settings uh, to be able to turn them on or to enable them. It's in the advanced settings somewhere in there, uh, but you can see I am on Windows, so I can't do the step-by-step -step on how to get there, but it's not too hard to figure out. And the very first one I'm going to talk about is the responsive mode. Now I'm in Firefox right now. We'll look at it in Chrome too, but the responsive mode is this little guy right here. So you pop that open and you're in responsive mode. People ask me about this all the time. Kevin, how do you do that? How do you get in here? So there you go. Now we can go through and make it responsive without having to resize your browser because resizing the browser all the time sort of sucks. Um, the responsive mode also gives you some access to different default settings and you can edit your list and add in new things. You can rotate the screen the two different ways. Uh, you can enable throttling so you can see what it would be like on a regular or good 3G network, different stuff like that to slow things down and better simulate it being on a phone. So that is our responsive mode here. Now I did mention we'd look at it in Chrome. So if I pop open Chrome right here, we're in Chrome. And uh, in here, if I go to the DevTools, and I open it up. Uh, so doo -doo -doo. Uh, the responsive mode, I keep going over to this side because in Firefox, it's over here. Chrome does it right here. So the exact same thing. We can enable and disable responsive mode. As you said, you can change it through different screen sizes or set it to responsive so you can control it on your own. And through this as well, you can get some options for the different um, speeds that you want to be using or simulating, I should be saying. Uh, you can rotate the device to see what's going to happen. You can zoom too, because I think on some devices, just to make it fit properly, they will zoom. So you can make sure, you know, if you want to adjust your zoom, you can do that as well. So that is uh, the responsive mode. Super easy to do, super useful. It will not be a perfect simulation, but it does give you a good head start. Now, once you're done with that, you're happy with it, you do want to test it on actual mobile devices because you will find that as good of a job as it does letting you know how it works, um, it will not be 100% perfect. One difference that Chrome does do here actually is they simulate that it's a touch screen and you're going to be dragging and there won't have any hover effects and stuff like that. I don't think I have any links or my buttons I think have a hover. So you can see here it's not doing anything. Uh, whereas if we jump back over to Firefox, um, once this is opened, um, it's working like a regular mouse. I can select things. I have my hover and all of that. So the Chrome one does try and simulate that. But one thing I really like about Firefox is you've noticed I've closed my dev tools here. So you open them, turn on responsive mode, and then you hit X and it's gone. Whereas if we're over in Chrome, uh, as soon as I close this, boom, you lose your responsive mode. It's completely gone. So that is one way that you can, uh, one of the advantages there that I guess Firefox does have over Chrome um, and one that I sort of like uh, as a feature. And if you don't even want to open your dev tools because you're literally just opening it, this is only in Firefox. I don't think Chrome has a similar, if it does, I haven't been able to find it. 
um, but it is your control shift M, or if you're on a Mac, it would be command shift M, which is just gonna enable and disable it without even having to open your dev tools. So that is a nice little trick if you wanna speed things up just a little bit. And it's easy to remember because it's with an M, which, you know, mobile. So a uh, nice, easy way to be able to do that. Uh, not dev tools, responsive mode, just like that in Firefox. Okay, so that one is nice and handy, but we have some better ones that we're gonna get to here. Um, another one is this, what I have going on right now, and that does seem to open with the shortcut that I was using, but if I click on that, it's this little guy here. So it's in the exact same place in Chrome, so we won't look at it there. And it's this guy that highlights what, error, what everything is. And this is super handy for just like figuring out what's causing spacing and understanding where things are. So you can see the margin that I have on my button there, the padding that's on it, the content. Uh, my paragraphs, you see there's only space after. So if ever you're looking for something, you're like, why is there so much empty space here? I can see that some of that empty space is padding that's gonna be on my section. And then I can come on to here and I also have a little bit of margin that's on this H2 uh, as a margin top on there. So it also gives me what that element is. It gives me a little bit of information on it. So that can be really, really helpful and really, really cool. Uh, Chrome, actually, I said I wasn't gonna open it in Chrome, but Chrome does give you a few little cool things when you are doing this. Uh, let's add, get out of responsive mode here and we'll click on that. And you'll see that it does give me a little bit more information uh, on everything. So it's giving me the color, the font sizes, the margins on it, and a contrast ratio where it's actually warning me my contrast is a little bit low uh, on my title right there. Um, one thing the contrast will not show up on is if you have a background image. I believe it only shows up when you have background colors, background images. It doesn't know what the image is, so it isn't testing. In this case, it knows it's a white background. Or if I come over to this, it's going to know that I have uh or there you can see it's not even coming up because it's a background image because i have a gradient as the background so there's no contrast that is popping up so that is a cool little thing that you can do firefox you can get the contrast thing by going into the accessibility dev tools i did a video just going into the firefox dev tools and some things they do a little bit better than chrome's so if you are uh, curious about that you can check that out i'll mention that again before the end of the video though i'm sure um, so this is a really nice one though, just for finding things, looking where spacing is coming from, especially when you have phantom spacing and stuff. Or if you just really wanna quickly uh, select something, because when you click on it, it's gonna select it down here as well. You get all the rules for it, they're gonna be showing up over on this side. Um, and actually I haven't talked about it, but if you're really not familiar with your dev tools, it is really cool that once you select something here, and as you're going here, actually you can see it's highlighting things the same way this little guy does. And when you're doing that, so you can see your spacing here as well. And once you've selected something, you can see all of the different properties that are being applied from the top all the way down. So usually it's the ones on the top here that are actually being applied. And then as you go down, you start going into different things and you can come through and actually change things here to see how it's going to affect stuff. So here at margin bottom, that's on my section subtitle. So if I change that to, let's just say 5M or 57, let's do five. <laughs> Uh, it's going to create a really big space. I see it here live and it's going to be doing that on all of them because that was on my class of section subtitle. Now it's really important to know these changes do not get saved in your file. These are just preview, nothing else. So as soon as I refresh the page, all of those will disappear. Now, this is one of the really cool things I like. This is in both browsers. Um, when you're here and let's say we select an item, let's say we select this and we do want to play with the margins of it a little bit. Um, instead of sticking on the styles, and this is in Chrome, we're going to look at Firefox too because it's a little bit different. If I go over to Computed, I get the box model for it. Um, so you can that's how you can find the box model here. So this is Chrome where it's under Computed. Firefox, of course, has to do things a little bit differently. Instead of that, it's going to be under the Layout tab, but you just might have to scroll down a little bit before you get to it. So here, let's say I go and I select my button and I see all this here. You can actually see uh, the different values that are being applied, just like you could in Chrome. And the cool thing here is I could come and actually change it and you can see that it actually increased my margin. I didn't have to hunt it down over here where sometimes it's a little bit harder to find stuff. So you can come over to here and maybe I want to change this to 10 M. Uh, M. I don't know why I'd want to make it so big, but you can change it there and see it live and actually changing, which is kind of cool. Um, if you, again, if you don't want to go hunting down things over here or to see what a small tweak on the box model would actually do. Don't use that one too often, but I do think it's kind of cool that you can do that. You can even add borders and stuff, even though I didn't have any. So interesting, but I don't think that my button looks better. So we'll hit refresh on that.
Now, one of my absolute favorites is a good thing we're on my button because here I have a transition and transitions, anything, animations, this is going to work. You can see here and let's make this bigger. Uh, so another little tip, you can actually zoom in just a control plus here, just like on a website, we'll zoom in on your dev tools. And so if I look at my transform here, it says it's a transform and then it gives me this little guy here. And if I click on that little guy, well, check that out. I get my ease function here. So if you ever wanted to create a cubic bezier, but you had no idea what you wanted, well, as soon as you grab these handles and start dragging stuff around, it's creating a custom cubic bezier. How cool is that? Uh, it's gonna show you a little bit of what it looks like with the animation that's happening there. So if I do something like that, it should go fast and slow down toward the end. So fast, and you can see it's slowing down. And if we do something like that, it's gonna sort of, you know, you can see how the animation is happening there. So it gives you a bit of a preview. And then you can always copy and paste that right in. This works exactly the same in Chrome. The screen's a little bit different. Um, oh, they do have the pre-built ones. So Chrome, same idea. It has some pre-built in ones. You can drag the handles around. I'm not gonna go over there. Works very, very similarly. And while we're on that, I wasn't planning this, but you can also do um, change colors. There's a color picker built in. So that's for the shadow that's underneath here. So if I came and changed the color of my shadow, you can see the color of it's changing and you can play around with that. And that's for any color whatsoever. Uh, so let's just say I came onto my YouTube here and I click on that and you can see there's my color so I can go through and you'll see all the colors in this case it's a custom property so it's changing it in multiple places at once and I can see what that change would look like if I like the color copy and paste it over to my code editor and I can keep on going so nice one there but again this this tip is more about that um, the the animation being able to custom like pull those handles I think that's really cool and last but not least, and I guess this is not the most exciting thing. It's not really a tip, but it's a way you can personalize stuff. So we saw we can zoom in and out. Um, in Firefox, you can click this little guy here and you can go into your settings and of course change between a dark and a light mode. And a lot of people have been telling me I should switch this to dark mode. So why not? Let's switch it over and stick with, whoops, didn't mean to close that. Um, stick with a dark mode here in Firefox. I do think it is a little bit nicer. So we'll go with that. Now, one thing I sort of prefer about Chrome is the default is actually set up to uh, your system preferences. So my system preferences, I've set it to a dark mode. So it inherited that and it used it. But if ever you wanna switch away, you can see I can switch over to a light mode. And if we come back to the settings here, I can switch that back to system preferences or the dark. And you can see there's a lot of other stuff you can change in those settings. So don't be too shy about them. Um, and another thing actually, while we're here, uh, talking about a bit of personalization, I, I said five tips at the beginning. I don't even know how many we're at anymore, to be honest with you, uh, just with all these little things that we're talking about, you can change the order of tabs just by clicking and dragging them. So if you're like, I'm always in the security tab for some reason, you could drag that all the way to here and now your security tab is there and then you don't want it. You drag it all the way back over there and it's over there. And this is in, I don't even know what browser I'm in anymore. We're in Chrome right now, so let's jump over to Firefox and let's grab this storage guy and just drag storage over there. And you can see you can just reorder these to your heart's content. You can customize this as much as you'd like. So that I do think is really, really handy, really, really cool. I do think it's really important if you want to get better at CSS and HTML and just being a developer in general, you do need to spend a lot of time in your dev tools. You can learn so much by using them and learning about the different tools that they have available to them. We've literally just scratched the surface here. We've just looked at some of the basic ones. These are a lot of the ones some people might be saying, I've known about this forever. These were really obvious, but a lot of people don't know about them. Start using them if you didn't know about them. It's going to make your life so much easier if you do start using your dev tools a lot. You learn a lot from using them. And if you're a bit like me and you write a lot of CSS specifically, I'd strongly recommend checking out Firefox just because it has a few things that it does that Chrome doesn't do that are CSS specific. Chrome's a great browser. I use it every single day still, but Firefox for CSS debugging is so much better. If you're curious about why and some of the dev tools that are specific to it, you can check out a video that I have for it. The link for it will be down in the description below where I just look at the features that it does better in terms of that. And I think that is it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you learned this. If there was any of these that you didn't know about before, please let me know about in the comments below and also just list other ones you think are useful. What's a whole, like if you have like four other ones, put all four of them down there. I'd love to know about them and other people can go and look in the comments and find out about some other useful dev tools over there as well. If you're new to this channel and you did enjoy this video and learn a couple things, please do consider subscribing. 
Thank you very much once again for watching. A huge thank you to my patrons for helping support me. Your support goes a really long way to help me keep going with all of this. So thank you guys so very, very much. And I do think that is it. I think I've talked about everything I wanted to talk about, except for until next time, don't forget to keep on making your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.